We're 700 k's drive south of Darwin, but Pigeonhole Station is right at the centre of attention for beef producers in the north right now. It's here that Australia's biggest grazing trial has confirmed that this country is indeed capable of sustaining double its typical grazing pressure. Yeah, currently we're using on average about 10% of the grass that grows every year and um, uh, we, we know from past research we could uh, achieve about, we could graze about 20%. It's a conclusion that would completely change the rules of grazing management around here and beyond. So a $6.4 million research investment across five years has sought to discover how higher stocking rates can be a sustainable commercial reality. The Pigeonhole project has set out to, to change the productivity of North Australia is what we're trying to do. The project is a joint venture of Meat and Livestock Australia and the station's owners Hatesbury Beef. And this is the concluding field day. Producers have come from up to 2,400 kilometres away. The implications for the northern pastoral industry are absolutely humongous. If we can indeed increase stocking rates to that extent and do it sustainably, imagine what's possible on every property from northwest Queensland right through to the western Kimberley. Maybe that's why there's so many people at this field day. The project used commercial scale paddocks, testing performance at pasture utilisation rates from 15 to 40 per cent. The magic number 20 per cent is based on a host of criteria – individual animal performance, herd reproductive performance, ground cover, pasture quality and composition and biodiversity. When we put these things together, you know, it, it all kind of came to the same conclusion that up to 20 per cent is good, beyond that uh, you're starting to risk in terms of um, a lot of variability in animal production, also um, a lot more risk in terms of environmental uh, for soil loss uh, and species composition. But actually achieving higher pasture utilisation depends on being able to get the cattle to graze uniformly across the paddocks. You get some parts of the landscape being very heavily used by cattle and some parts not being used at all, so that there's effectively forage not being used. And that issue arises because paddocks are very large and there's only a few watering points. So there's only limited parts of the landscape that cattle can use. So what we want to do is try and test some strategies for getting more uniform use of the landscape by the cattle. Those strategies were smaller paddocks, way smaller than the 130 square kilometres that's typical around here, and more watering points. One of the apparatus for testing those strategies Cows wearing GPS collars because although there's no mobile phone signal for hundreds of kilometres in any direction, there's any number of satellites overhead. The collars uh, record um, the GPS location every hour of every day um, of you know, the cow that's wearing the collar. And this is the collar up close. GPS receiver up here sends data down into the recorder in this box which also contains a battery to keep it powered for a full six months. Another neat thing that it does is to record when the cow's got its head down or head up so I can tell when it's feeding. When the cows come in we download the data, recycle the collar and we put the collar back on another cow that goes back out into the same paddock and we've done that for three to four years so we've got um, the distribution patterns from a whole heap of different cows in these paddocks. We have come up with a recommendation from this work that suggests that uh, paddocks of around about 30 to 40 square kilometres with two watering points is a good compromise between getting more even use of the landscape and the cost involved in actually developing uh, the infrastructure. The infrastructure costs will be considerable to convert properties with paddocks around 130 square kilometres to blocks a quarter that size. But project data show a strong return on capital invested because of, among other things, reduced mustering costs. There was also a quantum leap in water infrastructure technology, allowing a station manager to watch and monitor bores, water storage and troughs, and control them, all via UHF from the homestead, a huge cost saving. Producers certainly caught the fire. Oh, it's been a brilliant day, it's shown a lot of opportunity of development of land for this future and where we've got to go to keep productive and make money. I think I'll be uh, uh, um, doing a, a more infrastructure work, more waters and more fencing. And um, as I've seen today, uh, you know, the return to capital from doing that is quite considerable.
For producers, the pigeonhole project was a win-win. They got a 50% stake through MLA's participation, but MLA's contribution was 100% supplied by the federal government in response to Hatesbury's own investment in the project. It is a unique opportunity for um, partial businesses um, that have an interesting idea um, that they want to invest in uh, to, to receive matching funding from the Commonwealth Government through MLA. What happens next is up to the industry, the wider industry, and I believe it'll be more an, an evolution over time, And um, but the results are, are, are compelling. <laughs>